So let's again bring up the HMI view. I'm going to make it a little bigger. And let's go ahead and press the on button. Let me see the light goes high. Press the off button and the light goes low. Let's take a look again. MB4 is linked to the on button. When I press it, we want to see that the contact for MB4 lights up. Uh, when it lights up, it means it's passing power through. We notice that our inverted contacts, until that bit goes high, uh, they will be conducting power as well. So MB5, again, the off button, it's only going to break the connection when we press it. So we don't have to worry about it right now. When I press MB4 and I let go, and MB6 has gone high. And because MB6 was high on the left scan out, as we come in again, the contact, or the, the input for MB6, or the, this light network, is still high. So it's going to keep it high. You can press the off button, and we'll break the power flow, and the light will go off again. And I'll do that one more time. This time, notice I'm holding down MB4, and its contact is still entered. As I let go. Good. MB6 is currently high. When I press the off button, I notice I'll hold down. MB5 is no longer energized, or the contact, I should say, is no longer energized. So we're not outputting anything. I'll let go of the button, and MB5 goes high again. So the contact goes high again. Um, does that idea make sense to everyone? Okay. Well, well, after this, we'll also have a, a, a bit of an explanation written up uh, that you can download from our from our website. Okay. So if that network is okay, <coughs> let's go ahead and we're going to create a similar network, but we're going to take it the uh, functions of the operating system now. So this latch network uh, was very popular before we had things like uh, an enhanced operating system. Uh, notice that we use the output. We set it back in as an input to keep its state high. Uh, this is, it's, it's a great idea. Uh, but what we can do now is use uh, set and reset bits. Uh, so we'll explain those in a second. Let's go back to the startup. And we're going to create very similar to this, uh, an on and off button in the lab right here. So again, I'll just do this quickly. We'll call this on button. And we'll link it to MB7 on button. Four, okay, and we'll create an off button. We'll call it off button four, okay. And again, we want to make them the same size. Notice that the blue is highlighted on the off button, make the same size. Uh, so we use the blue highlighted or the off button as a reference in this case. Um, we're going to go ahead and create another binary image. Same color scheme, red and green. And we'll link it again to a memory bit, memory bit 9. In this case, light output 4. Okay. okay. I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. And make sure you hit the OK button. I guess we'll lose everything. OK, so we have, again, an on button and an off button and the white. Um, we didn't change anything. Uh, as far as the HMI is concerned, these are going to operate in the same exact way, but we're going to program them different on the latter side. Okay. So we'll go to the latter again, and we'll this time create a comment, and we'll say output 4. Okay. So 
uh, we're going to build the thing. We're going to do it in a different way. Uh, what we've used so far is direct and inverted contacts and direct coils. Again, the inverted contact is the opposite logic as the direct contact. So if uh, the contact is high when MB1 is high, uh, the inverted will be low. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll go to Boolean here and go to contacts. So notice we used our first two. We're going to use the positive and the negative transition contacts. Now, what does this mean? I'm going to place this here. I'm going to talk about it real quick. Uh, the positive transition is the first moment that the, the bit goes high. So like we had in the first map, let me just link this to the correct on button four. Like we had in the first net, with the direct contact, we needed to hold MB0 down, the button of MB0, for the light to be high. Uh, the positive transition is just going to take that rising edge. So the first moment that it goes high, MB7 positive transition contact will be high. We call this a single scan transitional element. <coughs> So when MB7 is high and we come through the net, I'm sorry, we come through the scan, we get to net four. For the first scan that MB7 is high, we'll output from this contact. Uh, for all subsequent scans, it's going to be low. So this is a single scan where we can output from this contact. Now, if we think about it, we can't really hold anything high with a single scan. Uh, what we're doing in net three here was holding MB6 high with its own state. We're feeding it back into it. If we try to do this, let me link that to the output. We will have MB9 go high for one single scan, and then it'll go back low because nothing is holding it high. The coil always needs to be uh, energized in, in some manner to be activated. So we're going to get rid of this, and we're going to use from the coils the set coil. Now the set coil is nice because it will maintain its state. If we set it, if we turn memory bit 9 high, it will stay high until we influence it by something else. Um, what we're going to use uh, is a reset coil. So let's go ahead and take contacts first. We're going to do a little interesting experiment here too. We're going to take the negative transition contact for the off button. Uh, so that will be memory bit 8. Or again, if we want to say buttons, we can select off button 4. Now the negative transition is going to operate similar to the positive transition, but it's only going to output when we let go of the button. So we can hold our finger down on the off button, and only the first moment when we let go will it conduct power through it. So we're going to use that to activate in this case. Notice that the popular items are also available on this uh, this vertical bar. We're going to select the reset coil, place it next to it here. We get MB9. We're working with the same bit. So when we let go of the off button, we'll reset MB9 and we'll turn the light off. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and download this. Uh, again, contact, I'm sorry, connection, download, and download. And we'll say OK. Okay, so we're finished downloading. Let's go online again. Uh, again, connection, online test. I'm going to select remote app, remote app access here just to pull up the screen so we can all see it, make it a little bigger. We'll place it next to the networks. So now let's look at the, the networks we created and the lights. Uh, if we press now the on button, press it just once, and the light goes on. I'm going to press the off button and we turn the light off. So let's take a look again. Maybe we can watch the ladder and the light here. <clears throat> I'm going to press and hold the on button. So as soon as I press it down, it's still on, but notice it's not really 
uh, active. It's not energized like the set coil is here. Uh, so the positive transition only on the first <coughs> moment where I pressed it has activated for a single scan the set coil. Now the set coil is special because it only needs a single scan to activate. So MB7, our positive transition here, is given a single, um, a single, well, we've activated for a single scan, and MB9 is set. So I'm going to let go now. Let me see that the light is still high. I'm going to press and hold the off button here. Notice the light is still high. Uh, we use the negative transition. So the negative transition is waiting for the state of this bit to go from 1 to 0. So I'm going to let go now, and we should see that the light will go red. OK, and it does. OK, so is that clear uh, for everyone? You can say, what have we done here? <coughs> We've introduced uh, the idea of single scan transitional elements, things that only need to be activated once instead of being uh, held down, uh, like the direct coil. So we have the positive transition, the negative transition. Is it good? Okay. We have the positive negative transition for our inputs, and we have the set and the reset coil for our outputs. Uh, again, we can take a look at the HMI section. Uh, as far as the user is concerned, there's no difference in this input, I'm sorry, this on and off button versus this on and off button. The lights go on and off just the same. We'll press on here, we'll press off here, we'll press on here, we'll press off here. I'll, I guess with the exception of that negative transition. Uh, so there's there, one, one point is also that there are many ways to do things um, in the ladder logic. Now, the nice thing is that because we have a more advanced operating system uh, than we did comparing to, say, relay logic programming, uh, we have this, this set and this reset where we can set and reset a bit, and it'll, it'll maintain its state until we come and influence it again. So the, the idea of the single, strand, <coughs> single scan transition is very important. Uh, also, the idea of the program scan is very important. OK, so if that's OK, let's go ahead and let's build two more uh, series of buttons. We're going to do two more examples. We're going to do a toggle where we have one button to turn the light on and off. Uh, so far, we've turned the light on and off by using a direct contact. If we let go, it went off. We've turned the light on and off using our latch. And then we've turned the light on and off using our set and reset. So those are both with two buttons. Okay, so let me close out of this, and we'll go offline again. Uh, the other thing we're going to do now, because we're running out of HMI real estate here, is create a new screen and create a button to jump to that screen. Uh, so again, in our navigator here, Okay, I apologize for all the coughing. 